Greetings friends, welcome once again to this edition of Art and Coffee, the video series dedicated to helping you find and forge your own unique voice in the realms of visual art and visual storytelling. As always, this is yours truly Gabe Dunstan and I'm so glad to speak with you today. Today's coffee is the 46 blend from Counterculture Coffee Makers. It is dark chocolate, smoky, and full-bodied. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, that they are not wrong. This is uh, something of a dark roast, uh, not too dark, and the acidity is surprisingly low. But uh, man, like I throw down some. I like to throw down creamer. My wife likes enough milk in there to make it a nice blonde coffee. I like mine like middle of the road, right in between, you know, black and and blonde, like that right in the middle. And this coffee, the roast is so dark that uh, um, it takes way too much cream or you'd have to ruin it. So, you know, if you like the darker stuff but you don't want something to overpower you, this is the way to go. A bit of business before I get into the topic. I'll be as swift as I can. Uh, my voice is not 100% right now. Last night, uh, my uh, wife and I were, were very cordially invited to a birthday celebration for a mutual friend of ours. Uh, and this celebration took place at a local heavy metal club for heavy metal karaoke night. And uh, needless to say, I, uh, I may have overdone it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can't overdo heavy metal. But uh, if you wonder why my voice is a little scratchy, that's why. So enough of all of this. Today's topic is a rough one. It's a big one. I'm not going to lie. I've been avoiding this one. Uh, that's why there was a pretty big gap in between last episode and this one. And it's not because I've been lazy. It's because I have recorded, listened back, and deleted this episode three times. This is, this is my, uh, I believe my fourth time recording this episode. Because it's hard and I feel like I'm going to break some hearts and, and uh, disillusion a lot of people in, in a way that hurts and sucks but needs to be done. And part of it is reliving a series of mistakes that I made in my own life that I'm still paying for and mistakes that my friends have made that they're still paying for and it hurts and it sucks. But gotta hear it, gotta hear it. This is important stuff, especially if you're younger. So take a deep breath, settle in, and get ready. The number one question that I am asked by the students that I teach, usually in middle school or high school, is I'm really interested in art. I'm really interested in art as a career. Should I consider going to art school? And the answer is no. With a very few exceptions, the answer is emphatically no. Art school in general is not a good idea and you probably shouldn't be going. Now this is going to be three parts. Should I go to art school or not? This is a three part episode. In this one, part one, the answer is no and I'll tell you all the reasons why not. And it's going to be a downer and it's going to suck but it's important and you need to listen to it because this is the stuff that I desperately needed an adult in the know to tell me when I was younger and there just weren't any available. Part two is what you can do instead of art school and when art school is actually a good idea and how to tell the difference. So if you like start touring and saying, I want to go to this one, I want to go to that one, like I can tell you the things to look for that let you know this one might be all right. And part three, I'm going to tell you my own personal journey. Uh, and it's it's weird. It's awkward. I'm I'm a talkative guy. I'm a pretty extroverted person, but I don't like opening up about my own life this way because I am uh, because I'm so scared of it being seen as vanity as just a, a worthless navel gazing but I need to get over it because again when I was much younger I needed an adult like me who had been through this to tell me their experience so in part three I'm going to open up and tell you my own art school and my own art school experience uh, the good and the bad, and there was both, and let you know all of the ramifications that I'm still dealing with now, uh, now that I'm in my 30s, now that I've been doing this for a while, and it is with the hopes that you might be able to learn from my experiences, um, 
And also, just if you're going to if you're going to listen to my episodes, if you're going to listen to this video series, it's it probably a good idea to understand the person that you're talking to and where they're coming from, because that's something that was missing in art schools was you just get your professor and that's that, and you don't know where they're coming from until like halfway through the semester. And sometimes where they're coming from is just a bad place, and it hurts and it sucks, and that's one of the reasons why art school is usually not a good idea. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so. Part one is this one, why art school is a bad idea. Part two, what you can do instead of art school, and this is the video I'll make uh, after this one. What you can do instead of art school, or when art school is a good idea, the very few exceptions. And then part three, my own personal experience into my art journey. So let's begin with part one. And let's begin very clearly. I am speaking right now to either the high school student who is staring graduation in the face and trying to make plans, or to somebody who is maybe later in life and thinking, you know what, I would like to be an artist, I would like to learn some skills, I'd like to go to art school and whatnot else. Now if you are younger than this, if you are say in middle school, uh, go ahead, take a deep breath and relax. Don't worry about this stuff right now. Just worry about your art, worrying about drawing, okay? Because you're doing so much growing up right now, and growing up is already hard enough. So just focus on growing up, maturing as best you can, drawing, and having a good time. This is the time in your life where it's most important for your art to be A, fun, and B, a useful emotional outlet for you. So if you are younger than high school age, take a breath relax you can listen to this if you want but don't worry too hard if you are older than high school age say you're later in life you're maybe you know maybe you're my age maybe you're in your 30s maybe you're in your 40s maybe you're in your 50s i want you to know something if you want a career in art it's not too late for you you got this you can do this you have an advantage there's so many kids who've been making art their whole lives and so by the time they reach we'll say 21, 22, like they're ready for it. They're ready for the big time. And if you're in your 30s, 40s, or 50s, and you've not been doing it that long, and kids so much younger than you are killing it at art, don't worry about it. Don't focus on it. It's not too late for you because what you've got that they don't have is A, life experience. When you're telling stories, that is bloody huge. And that's something that you can't fake. And it's not something that you can get anywhere else. And number two, what you have is more focus and more ability to focus so if you're older and you're thinking about art school this is for you too and I want you to know just like the high school kids that I'm mostly talking to right now uh, that there is a way to do it art school is not necessarily the way and I will tell you how in part two so let's begin with part one let's get just knee deep right away <laughs> so my friend my young friend uh, you're probably thinking about if I could go to art school, I'd be surrounded with art kids that are like me. They're on fire about comics, about illustration, about storytelling, about about using their imagination to uh, convey complex information about an emotional landscape or just complex ideas. They're into the same things I'm into, maybe. They're into the same movies or the same TV shows or the same books and the same comics. And just, I'll be surrounded by people who are like me, finally. Because where I'm at right now, it's like me alone, or it's me and like one or two of my art friends, or it's just me and the internet. And wouldn't it be nice if it was me and some art friends, and we could collaborate, and we could be in this great collaborative environment where we're all drawing together. And that's, I get it man, that's the fantasy. I want that now. I want that so bad. That'd be so fun. Uh, there's a reason I'm making these videos and I'm monologuing instead of chatting with people because I'm, I'm still kind of in that situation where it's me and a couple of my art friends and I want the big collaborative environment but friends art school is not that sometimes it is for some people it is I've heard a couple of people who just like yeah art school is great I met a lot of friends and we're still friends to this day but most of the people no most of the people art school is like every other college experience or like uh, every other high school experience you you get there and you find out there's a lot of different people with a lot of different ideas and especially in art a lot of different snobs who like think that your the movies and books and stuff that you like is stupid 
and the stories you want to tell are worthless, and the art form that means so much to you is a great big waste of everyone's time. It's tat and it's trash, and, and so many times those people are your professors. Especially if you're going to like a state uni the art school, the college of art inside of like a state university, which is what I did. And most of the people I talk to who go to art schools go to like the college of art inside a larger four year university. Um, and if you go, I've, I've spoken also and I'm friends with a lot of people who went to dedicated art schools and it's the same there. You get a lot of professors who... Uh, think that what you're doing is crap and they're not really into it. You get a lot of very earnest professors who can recognize that you're kind of stuck in a specific idiom, in a specific loop, and that you are just kind of regurgitating, uh, just regurgitating the things that you like, like not even changing them, just kind of telling the same story again without putting your own spin on it. And they'll try to break you of that habit, and that's very healthy, but that professor is pretty rare. And therein lies the next trick man in in art schools your instructors your professors that's a crapshoot it's not a school by school this school is good that school is bad it's professor by professor this professor's not good this one is and it's very much a glove fit this professor gets me this one doesn't and the one that doesn't get you does get some other kids so you get this mixed bag the worst professor i ever had the worst teacher i ever had in my life there was a couple kids in my school who thought that she was just the greatest and man uh she said some some cruel things to me that still stick with me and so that's the other problem you're paying a lot of money for professors that might not even like you might actually do active harm towards your development as an artist and oh, it sucks going into debt for somebody to for paying giant gobs of money for somebody who is self-important to hold you back that's a thing that happens and it happens a lot the facilities at the school you go to are kind of a crapshoot and if what you're into is comics and illustration uh, I want you to put your eyes on the screen real quick. Boom. It's paper and a pen. And before I used this pen, I used a pencil. There you go. You don't need big, fancy facilities. And whether your school has great facilities, like everybody's got a Wacom tablet, or crap facilities, nobody's got anything and you have to buy all of your own supplies, um, man, the schools still cost the same. You know, they either cost the same or more. They're all expensive. And you don't need great facilities, so don't don't let the razzle-dazzle fool you. A room full of Wacom tablets is also a room full of uh, devices that may hobble you. People who learn to draw on Wacom tablets without fully understanding pencil and paper first. They're not the best drafts people, but that's, that's a story for a different time. Ask me later. The biggest reason why art school is a bad idea is simple, cold, cost-benefit analysis. And if you're artsy and you're creative, this is not the conversation you want to have, but it's important because this conversation will affect the rest of your life. Art school, <clears throat> art school is supposed to teach you a trade, and I know a lot of people this is turning them off real hard, but nope, don't be turned off, don't be turned off, because if you're going to pay a lot of money for something, that something needs to pay you back. And unless you're rich, and unless you come from money, getting paid back in quote-unquote life experience that's not good enough. That's not good enough. Unless you come from money or unless somebody else is paying all your bills for you, uh, you can get life experience any old way. You don't have to go into debt for the rest of your life. And that's the cost. That's literal. I know of so many people and will tell you who are literally in debt until they die. So the cost is high. For your universities, very expensive dedicated art schools even more so but what you get out the other end what you get for your your uh, bachelor's in art or maybe even your master's degree what you get is a worthless piece of paper and that's it once upon a time if you had a four-year degree from a university in almost anything uh, that was a ticket to middle-class respectability uh, you could get almost uh, any degree and that would be a ticket to a white collar job with uh, a decent starting salary and a benefits package and maybe uh, room to grow in whatever 
place you got a job in. And that has become less true uh, in the past uh, 10 years, 10, 11 years. But um, it was almost never true for an art degree. Uh, the art degree, the four-year undergraduate art degree, uh, usually Bachelor of Arts in, you know, whatever your field was, ceramics. Um, that's a ticket to nothing. That's just a piece of paper that says, yep, you were there. And then that's it. And you just paid all the tuition, and then you paid all the money for your books, and you paid all the money for your art supplies. And, uh, and, and then at the other end, you get a piece of paper that is ticket to nowhere. Congratulations. Now, if you're after an art job of some kind, which there's plenty, they're, like that's a thing, they exist, and there are art jobs with benefits packages and whatnot, particularly in animation, particularly in Southern California. Um, if you want that job, you still don't need the degree, because those employers don't care. The people who hire artists and creatives to do art and creative work, they don't care what school you went to. They don't care what grades you got. They don't care what classes you took. They don't care if you graduated with a 4.0, you're summa cum laude. They don't care that your whole family is so very, very proud of you. What they care is, can you do the work? And the way that you prove you can do the work is with a portfolio. And art schools don't usually tell you how to put one together, or they don't tell you effectively. Which leads me into my next little little tidbit here and this is controversial but I believe it with my whole heart art school is kind of a scam now not all of them and the amount of scamishness inside of each in individual school or art department varies and the number one bit of scamishness that they all have is um, usually they want you to submit some kind of portfolio or some kind of little proving, hey, I, I'm, I've, I want to be an artist and here we go. Here's some proof on paper that I can art okay. Um, and the idea is if you're good enough, they accept you. And when I was younger and I submitted the portfolio and I was accepted, I felt special. I had, I, the, the high lords of art have selected me I must really have something I must have potential and no that's not the case the case is if you've got the money and they've got the room welcome to art school and if enough kids apply then they can start picking okay uh, this one this one and this one because there are their portfolios are uh, definitely good enough and these at the bottom uh, they can apply again next year when we'll have more room and um, that's definitely true for my own experience I'll, I'll uh, elaborate more in episode 3 and part 3 of this but uh, yeah that's it every art school if, if they've got the room and you've got the money welcome to art school and if they don't have the room right now apply again later uh, when we do have more room they're not picking you because they really see I got something there, kid. No, they're, they're not even picking you. They're just looking at their spreadsheets. And do we have the room? Yeah. Did you, did your student loans come through? Cool, then yeah, welcome to art school. Uh, this is kind of a dirty secret, but art is a trade. Art schools should be trade schools and they're not. Music schools, they get it. They know it's a trade, and they train you like it. Uh, music schools either teach you how to be a musician for all occasions with a certain amount of competence, or they teach you how to be a music teacher with uh, for all occasions or specific occasions, depending on which route you go. And uh, you're able to teach with a certain amount of skill. And the reason they do that is because music has certain standards. You have to know how to play all of your scales and arpeggios. You have to have a baseline knowledge of music theory. You have to be able to sight read. You have to be able to uh, have a working knowledge of music history, and on and on and on. There's a series of standards that you have to meet so that when you leave a music school, you are a very specific kind of musician. You're a hireable musician. You're either hireable as a teacher or a performer or both. And when you audition for a music school, what they're checking is, it's like, no, you need to advance before we have something worthwhile to teach you. So they will reject you based on skill. 
because there's standards to meet. Visual art does not have standards to meet. So one of the most famous artists of the 20th century, their whole shtick was uh, getting rid of the idea of standards, period. Uh, beginning in the late 19th and going on into the early 20th century. And that's not the best because then art as a trade, the idea became unpopular. And therefore, artists became less skilled and less able to do the work. In graphic design and animation, those are treated like trades because you need, there's a, that's a job, there's a thing you have to do. There are ways to communicate more effectively, and I highly recommend that you get at least a working knowledge of graphic design. And no matter what art you decide to do or what method you use to tell your stories visually, a working knowledge of graphic design goes a long, long way. But that's it. There's no standards. So professors kind of teach what they want when they want with a few uh, exceptions. And most of them come from the fine art or art with a capital A. And so what they're trying to do is teach you to be painters and sculptors in the traditions of either uh, antiquity, like the great painters of the Renaissance, or in the tradition of the Impressionists and like, uh, uh, like what is essentially uh, the anti-Renaissance painter method. And they're trying to teach you to, to be the beret-wearing artist. Or at least in the, the four-year universities with art schools within them, that was my experience and experience for a lot of people. Um, so there's, there's no standards. There's nothing to hold them to it. And the school itself is expensive. It is a huge pile of money for an education whose piece of paper is worthless and, and whose actual knowledge has no standards. And uh, the, the knowledge that you get out of the school with in terms of how to live and breathe in the business, it's not there. In every other program that I've, I've been in or heard of, they teach that. Uh, my beloved, my wife, she went to nursing school and they taught her stuff that you have to do to be a nurse. You have to know how to intubate. You have to know how to draw blood, insert IVs, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and they train you how to do it. And then they also say, here's the stuff you've got to do in order to get hired. Uh, when I was in music school, that was what the professors were nailing into us. Here's what you do to get the gig. Here's how you get the gig in art school. And they also say, here's about how much to expect. Here's how much uh, to get paid. Here's what a good starting rate is. Art school, no. And in fact, talking about money or business or how to live is unpopular. It's gauche. It's how dare you bring that up. And what makes it worse is like the music teachers, those are people who... who uh, all the music teachers that I had, they were professional musicians for a while, and they made the decision, I want to teach. And so they know what they're doing. But most of the art teachers I had, they wanted to be artists, but it didn't work out for them because they didn't like talking business or money. So now they teach art as a backup, and they still don't know, and they still think it's unpopular to talk about, with a few exceptions. I had one or two professors who, who really tried, but the school didn't support that. That was just professors kind of going off the reservation. If the other professors knew they were doing it they were kind of I won't say blackballed but definitely looked down on a little bit now here's something that that no adult explained to me is is how expensive school is I just knew it was expensive and I heard dollar amounts and the dollar amounts were forty thousand dollars seventy thousand dollars a hundred thousand dollars more I, when I was in high school I don't know what that means I don't know what that means at all. And the trick is, those numbers actually don't mean a whole lot. The number that means a whole lot is the numbers behind your student loans, how they're structured, what the uh, what the interest rate is, how the interest rate accrues, when it compounds. And if this all sounds like a foreign language to you, yeah, it is, because they don't teach this in high school either. They'll teach you how to calculate Newtons in physics. They'll teach you advanced algebra and calculus, but understanding what an uh, APR is understanding how interest rates work yeah they don't teach you that and a lot of adults don't explain it to you the way loans student loans are structured is to keep you in debt for as long as you can possibly be in debt because that way you'll pay out more than the loan paid you that's how loans work that's why it's a business and in the United States we have bankruptcy laws that are pretty great financially if you get out of control there is a way to fix it, to get your stuff back together. 
and you can restructure your loans or just kind of get rid of a lot of your debts with bankruptcy. It's not a cure-all, and it hurts and it sucks, but you can do it. Not every country has that. But your student loans? Those don't go away. You're not allowed to declare bankruptcy of your student loans. Which means that your student loans are indentured servitude. The decision that you make as a teenager about going to school affects the rest of your life. And that's, I'm personally, I don't want to wax political, but I'm personally bothered by this to this day because the decisions I made about my education, I made when I was 17 and 18 years old. Now I'm in my 30s, I have a family of my own, and those teenage decisions affect my family. Like, I've got a little girl, and she didn't ask for my baggage, but whether she knows it or not, she kind of has to deal with it because there's um, the financial place that my family could be in. We're not because uh, a good chunk of the money that is made in our household every month goes to the decisions I made when I was a teenager. And man, that sucks. And it's not the worst for me. Uh, I, uh, I'll tell you my number. My, my student loans are in the neighborhood of $40,000. I don't know when I'll pay it off. But I know, uh, I know a lot of people, and I know their numbers. I know a guy, his number's 75 grand, and he went to a decent school, he got a master's degree, he did everything right, and he got the job that his master's was for. He's got a good job, and he sat down and crunched the numbers, and he's paying that debt off until he is 65. And for those of you who don't understand, he went to school when he was in his late 20s, and 65 is when you're supposed to retire. You're supposed to be done with work. And he can never retire because 65 is also around the age that you should be able to pay off your house. Uh, nope, he's gonna keep working because once he's done paying his student loans, he still has to pay for the house. And he still has to pay for the other living expenses that you don't think about when you're very young. I'll tell you one more story because it's, it's important that you hear it. Um, but I'll, I'll make it as quick as I can because this episode is already running long. Uh, I, ran, I met this woman. She went to a famous art school in Georgia. And we both had a day job and at the time. And we were just sitting down and chatting, uh, meeting each other for the first time. Uh, because our day jobs kind of ran into each other. Um, and found out like we both went to art school. I went to a four-year state funded university she went to famous private art school in Georgia that I won't name and she went for illustration and after a while I got her number like she trusted me enough and said uh, I'm 90 grand in debt and that's not the biggest number I've heard come out of that school and this woman's in her mid 40s and still 90 grand uh, she graduated with her degree in illustration which gets you no jobs that that is ticket to nothing uh and she made a real try of being an illustrator for kids books and for one reason or another it didn't work out which uh friends if you're listening that's a very common story is people giving a real shot to being uh, a professional artist of some kind and it not working out and you need to be aware that those exist, and you need to know why they exist. And that's another episode for another time, and I'm sorry, I digress again. So she got her degree, one reason or another, it didn't work out. Uh, and so she went on the hunt for uh, a day job so that she could more or less help raise her family. And she got a pretty good one. But once she got this job and took a look around, it's $90,000 in debt, and... Uh, she crunched the numbers and that number never goes away uh, because of the amount and because of the way her loan was structured and it wasn't a particularly bad loan she will be in debt for the rest of her life her family, her household will be in debt to a decision she made in her teenage years forever in a way that just doesn't go away and the art school knows this and they don't care uh, they had the room, and she had the money, so that's that was that. Now we're hitting uh, close to the 30 minute mark, so I need to wrap up, but the, um, 
the amount of scam involved in specific art schools, that's an episode unto itself. I'm cutting that short. I'm, I'm leaving out some material that it just now occurs to me, like that needs to be another episode. The cautionary tale of how you might be taken advantage of by a learning institution. Like that's something that's something that it, it occurs to me, it's my responsibility to talk about. So uh, that will be the next episode. That'll be down the line just a little bit. The next episode is going to be A, how you can get yourself a decent art education, how to become a better artist so that you can be a successful artist and go somewhere career-wise without art school, and B, the few times where art school is actually a good idea and can help you out. But until then, this has been part one, why art school is in general a bad idea. And this has been long, and it's been a downer, and I feel awful right now. I, I this, is, this was not fun for me. And I tell you what, uh, it's, it's been a long episode, and if you've stuck with me this long, g- good on you. Gracious. Because this has been a slog. This has been hard. And if you listen to the whole thing, man, I, I, I got a high five and a hug waiting for you over here. And I want to tell you from just the bottom of my heart, thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to this. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for going all the way through this slog. And I hope against hope that this helps you. Even if it hurts you. Even if it hurts your heart. Even if I'm kind of breaking the illusions and the hopes that you may have had for your future education man i just i I, you know i don't want to break your heart but i want you to know this stuff and i hope it helps so thanks so much for listening i want you to take care of yourself and please 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 don't ever stop making art